I will tell you this much before we even get into the technicalities of the actual production and the beat. I remember Biggie went in the booth and did the vocals for that. And when he came out, when he finished, yo, I went over to Puffy and I was like, yo, you going to let him say that? <laughs> I, I just felt like at the for the first one of the first times, I said, yo, Big is in there wilding. What is he saying? I said, yo, Puff, man, yo, chill, man. Yo, we're going to have all type of Christian rights and women's organizations come and try to rip the song down, the albums off the shelf. It was like, yo, just chill, man. And a little season, and they was like, yo, chill, man. They say, yo, Mo, why are you so sensitive? <laughs> hey, I, I just, I just, you, you know what I mean? At that time, I think that was probably the roughest thing that I had ever produced or that when it comes to lyrically that anybody had said on the mic. And I just remember that, man. I just remember I ran over to Puff. I was like, you gonna let him say that? You go <laughs> <laughs> But as far as the beat, um, it's, that version has never ever been released. I ain't gonna say the title, but I took the bass line was from a, a new birth record. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. We got some drums up in there from the meters. Um, and I have, I'll let y'all diggers do your homework. <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, and if you find the answer, keep it to yourself. There's all put nature there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, to this day, that's an unreleased version. It has never ever been released. Um, why hasn't been? Say, why hasn't it been released? They like the OG version. Why hasn't it been released? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. What's when's when's the timeline of this? Like when did this happen? This, this is ninety three before the actual album. During the making of Ready to Die. Right. It was in the same batch of songs that I had did with Biggie at that time. You know, the title track, Ready to Die, The What, um, Machine Gun Funk, Warning. Um, there's one more. What am I leaving out? The What? Yeah, I said that one, The What. Oh, right, okay, okay. But in that whole batch of songs that we did, um, and then there's others that was never released, not the original versions, like What You Want, What You Want, Nga. Um, I've done remixes for me and my, uh, um, several remixes for that that just wasn't accepted. Did a joint with him that never ever was released. They never used it called Money Holes and Clothes, something like that he had on the hook. So there's a couple of things out there that I did with Big that was never released. So mm, mm. Mm, mm. Okay, so then how, how did you and Big become great come become acquainted? How did you guys first meet? How did it here we go? Francesca Sparrow up at Rush. She um, called me into the office and was like, uh, she said, Andre, talking about Andre Harrell, rest in peace from Uptown Records, said Andre has a, a soundtrack for this new movie. The movie is called Who's the Man? And she said, um, he's got a new artist up there at Uptown that he thinks that, you know, you and this new artist could work well together. See if he could put y'all together to do a track. Now, months, be months before that, DJ Mr. C, who is originally from my same building in Brooklyn, we both mm -hmm. grew up in Lafayette Gardens housing projects together. And in the building that we lived in, 
he lived on eight and I lived on 11. And we were in the exact same line of apartments. When we, when we was little kids looking out the window, you know, you'd be in the window with your moms. I look down, I'd be like, yo, what up, Calvin? He look up, yo, what up, booby? We know each other and we grew up that far back. But he moved out of the projects when he got older. He got him a, an apartment, I'll never forget, over there on Gates Avenue between Franklin and Bedford. If you know Brooklyn, you know that. Um, so I used to go over his crib and check him out every once in a while. And uh, I went over there and he said, yo, check this out. One day I came over, he said, yo, check this out. Got this this um, this dude, this new MC. I got like a demo on him. He came through and was rocking on one of my instrumentals. The dude was dope. I didn't think nothing about it. Okay, months later, I go to that meeting that Francesca tells me about. Mm -hmm. I go up there to the meeting and it's that guy. <laughs> <laughs> When I went to Mr. C's house, Mr. C told me that guy, his name was Biggie Smalls. So when I get to the meeting, it was that guy. And Andre Harrell, they put, they put me together with Big for the soundtrack. Back then, Biggie Smalls, but because there was a trademark for another artist with another name, he just, for the soundtrack, if you look on Party and Bullsh, his name was knocked down to just Big B I G. Notorious B I G yeah. is something that came later. But and we went into the studio and created the song "Party and Bullsh." Um, that's Biggie's first official release. Which uh, which I'm planning to play after this, but. Um... Be before we get onto party and bullshit, um, because I know was was you ever involved? Mister C was the guy who was promoting um Biggie's mixtape, right? Demo tape. Mister C, as far as I can remember, is the first that was dealing with and handling um Notorious B.I.G. That's why he plays such um um major role, even on a level of what like um. Uh, what they call a executive producer along mm -hmm. with Puffy because um, we wouldn't have Biggie at Bad Boy if um, Mr. C didn't bring him mm. to to um, Bad Boy along with um, Maddie C that I told you about from the Source magazine. Right. And the unsigned hype, which is what Biggie had did um, music for. And um, so Mr. C and Maddie C's unsigned hype is responsible for uh, how Biggie made it to uh, Uptown Records first. And then when Andre Harrell fired Puffy and he had to start his own label, Puffy carried Biggie from Uptown over to. Bad boy Ariston. So that's right. how the story goes. 